Thank you for joining Wars of the Rosies. And this is Oddworth the Honorable Mrs. from the Encyclopedia of Freemasonry by Albert G. Mackey. Oddworth the Honorable Mrs. This lady who is well known as the Lady Freemason was the Honorable Elizabeth St. Ledger, daughter of Dunrell of Dunrell Court, County Cork, Ireland. She was born in 1693 and married in 1713 to Richard Oddworth Esquire of New Market Court, County Cork. It appears to be no doubt that while a girl, she received the first and second degrees of Freemasonry in Ireland. But of the actual circumstances of her initiation, several different accounts have been given. Of these, the most authentic appears to be one issued at Cork with the authority of the family in 1811 and afterwards republished in London. From this, it appears that her father, Binecat Dunrell, together with his sons and a few friends, was accustomed to open a lodge and carry on the ordinary ceremonies at Donrell Court. And it was during one of these meetings that the occurrence took place, which is thus related. It happened on this particular occasion that the lodge was held in a room separated from another, as is often the case by stud and brickwork. The young lady, being giddy and thoughtless, and determined to gratify her curiosity, made her arrangements accordingly, and with a pair of scissors, as she herself related to the mother of our informant, removed a portion of a brick from the wall, and placed herself so as to command a full view of everything which occurred in the next room. So placed, she witnessed the first two degrees in masonry, which was the extent of the proceedings of the lodge on that night. Becoming aware, from which she heard that the brethren were about to separate. For the first time, she felt tremblingly alive to the awkwardness and danger of her situation and began to consider how she could retire without observation. She became nervous and agitated and nearly fainted, but so far recovered herself as to be fully aware of the necessity of withdrawing as quickly as possible. In the act of doing so, being in the dark, she stumbled against and overthrew something, said to be a chair or some ornamental piece of furniture. The crash was loud, and the taller, who was on the lobby or landing on which the doors both of the lodge room and that where the Honorable Miss St. Ledger was, opened, gave the alarm, burst open the door and, with a light in one hand and a drawn sword in the other, appeared to the now terrified and fainting lady. He was soon joined by the members of the lodge present, and luckily, for it is asserted that but for the prompt appearance of her brother, Lord Dunrell, and other steady members, her life would have fallen a sacrifice to what was then estimated her crime. The first care of his lordship was to resuscitate the unfortunate lady without alarming the house, and endeavor to learn from her an explanation of what had occurred. Having done so, many of the members being furious at the transaction, she was placed under guard of the taller and a member in the room where she was found. The members reassembled and deliberated as to what, under the circumstances, was to be done. And over two long hours she could hear the angry discussion, and her death deliberately proposed and seconded. At length, the good sense of the majority succeeded in calming, in some measure, the angry and irritated feelings of the rest of the members, when, after much had been said and many things proposed, it was resolved to give her the option of submitting to the Masonic ordeal, to the extent she had witnessed, being fellow craft. And if she refused, the brethren were again to consult, being waited on to decide. Miss St. Ledger, exhausted and terrified by the storminess of the debate, which she could not avoid partially hearing, and yet, notwithstanding all, with a secret pleasure, gladly and unhesitantly accepted the offer. She was accordingly initiated. A very different account is given in Freemason's Quarterly Review from 1839, page 322 being reprinted from the Cork Standard of May 29, 1839. According to this story, Mrs. Aldworth was seized with curiosity about the mysteries of Freemasonry and set herself to discover them. So she made friends with the landlady of an inn in Cork in which a lodge used to meet, and with her connivance was concealed in a clock case which was placed in the lodge room, 
However, she was unable to endure the discomfort of her confinement in such narrow quarters and betrayed herself by a scream, on which she was discovered by the members of the lodge, and then and there initiated. It will be observed that according to this version, the lady was already married before she was initiated. The story is said to be supported by the testimony of two members of Lodge 71 at Quark, in which Lodge the initiation is said to have taken place. This, however, can hardly be correct, for that Lodge did not meet at Quark until 1777, whereas Mrs. Aldworth died in 1773. If, however, the commoner version of the story is preferred, according to which Miss St. Ledger was initiated as a young girl, then the occurrence must have taken place before her marriage in 1713, and therefore before the establishment of Grand Lodges and the introduction of warranted and numbered lodges, and it is therefore a proof of the existence of at least one lodge of speculative masons in Ireland at an early period. After her marriage, Mrs. Aldworth seems to have kept up her connection with the craft, for her portrait in Masonic clothing, her apron and jewels are still in existence and her name occurs among the subscribers too. Desnig's Inquiry of 1744 and it has been stated that she presided as a master of her lodge. The story has been fully discussed by Brother Condor, Crawley, and others in the 8th volume, 1895, of the Transactions of the Cotor Corneta, Lodge of London, to which the curious are referred for further information. E.L.H. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.